Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. This is my son Ben and today we have a tasting of the M&H whiskey distillery from Israel. Yes, Israeli whiskey and it is the first distillery from Israel and yeah we're gonna get bit into detail what is M&H about and how do they produce and where do they get their casks from but um, yeah I would like to, first I'd like to go in with the yeah the the range of whiskey we're gonna try and why I'm gonna try which whiskey first in the uh, it's it's easy to say which one is first the the classic with just a little sherry influence and just a mild bourbon, well, mainly bourbon influence I've put as the first whiskey. And the last one we're gonna try today is the peated, with the peat uh, being the, yeah, the strongest uh, yeah, in the end, so it doesn't overwhelm anything that comes after it. And the two one in the middle, they were a bit, yeah, a bit more tricky. The, the second one I've chosen is the red wine and the third one is the sh sherry. And so I um, thought to myself which one is stronger, which one is more overwhelming and I went with sherry. So I put it in third and the second one with the red wine in second. I don't know, I've heard that it is a, a very strong red wine. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe you should try the red one as a third. But I think I'm pretty good with my... Uh, yeah, I would also sorting. say that the pigs uh, will introduce, pigs sherry will introduce a lot more of aroma in the in the third one. So I think the selection is right. And we have uh, someone from Israel here. Yeah. Uh, Amidal F. So he can probably tell us how to say it. What was the saying again? Ikaim. Ilkaim. Ilkaim. Ikaim. We don't know how to say it, but when, when you ding your glasses together and Cheers. to health or <laughs> to life or something like that, it means, yeah, hopefully we don't <laughs> butcher too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, we have to say there is a little uh, miniature assortment available mm -hmm. uh, where you find all those four uh, um, first uh, whiskeys from the distillery, from this new one. Uh, in an assortment where you can have a try first uh, before you go into the bigger bottles. The Israeli guy says Leheim. Leheim. Or is it, like an, is it an I or an L? A small L or a big I? A big I, I think. I, I, Chaim? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, the distillery is a quite young distillery and it. Uh, the plans for the distillery started in 2012 with a group of um, young entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs and they wanted to build a distillery. Amongst them was Gal Kalkstrein, a Jewish guy, and he came from, comes from the high-tech industry, so there will probably be a lot of high-tech involved in the distillery. They actually started building in 2014 and the distillery began in March 2015. So relatively young distillery, but now in the year 2021, we have a six year old whiskey from the first uh, distillation. So it's uh, quite some whiskey there and it's a very hot country, we all know that. And therefore it will mature pretty fast. Where is it? Uh, yeah, Israel. We have a map here, there is Israel. Israel is located on the Mediterranean Sea and that divides it from the mainland of Europe and the distillery is actually located in Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv is the yeah a city that is on the coast and pretty much in the middle of the country oh, <laughs> I forgot I forgot that there and um, yeah so the influence of the sea is definitely there at the distillery but later we're gonna learn where they store their casks probably some at the distillery but a lot of them also in very different regions of the land where the weather is cooler and hotter <laughs> at some parts yeah. 
Okay, so let's talk about the first whiskey then. Our first whiskey we're gonna have is the M&H Classic. And here you see uh, the M&H Classic label and the, um, the logo is uh, a bull with stripes. And now I come to the name of the distillery. M&H stands for milk and honey. Yeah, in these biblical stories and probably also in the Torah stories, um, Israel is described as the land where milk and honey flows. And the bull, that's just my interpretation. The bull stands for the cow, for the milk, and the stripes for the bee, and that milk and honey for you. Probably. But uh, the distillery, <laughs> I don't know, some people might think that, okay, there's milk and honey and whiskey. Ooh. No, it's Scottish made on, on the, yeah, Scottish regulations. Regulations. It's made after the Scottish regulations, except for produced in Scotland. <laughs> and so this is real whiskey. There's no milk and honey involved in the production at all. So they tend to want to call themselves now M&H Distillery. Yeah, and omit the rest. And omit the rest so they won't confuse the low information customers. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, the whiskey is matured in uh, bourbon cast, no coloring, no chill filtering, and some rejuvenated wine casks as you, well. You omitted the 46% ABV. Oh yeah, 46 And it's priced uh, just below 50. Between middle 40s to 50s, wherever you live. And yeah, you found something. Le ha Halim. Yeah, le, le, hai, le, le Halim. Le Halim. Le Halim. I think the, the uh, other uh, uh, has written in CH. Uh, and they always go with. Yeah, like the Swiss. <laughs> like the Swiss. <laughs> I don't see anything. So this is round number two. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Oh, so much for the never mix the grape and the grain. Yes, I thought about that as well, but somebody now told me, oh, it's all about the hygiene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. They for sure have a rabbi who mm -hmm. found a workaround. Workarounds, <laughs> everything about workarounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very flexible. Yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> flexible religion there. Mm hmm. So what you got? So I find a mm. a typical cask influence like the bourbons have, but uh, the theory behind is malt. So it's there's maltiness together with the bourbon cask cask influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Caramel. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nice bourbon cask matured whiskey, very f in in available numbers. In available numbers, yeah. yeah. So there's a little oakiness in it as well, and a, a light floral top note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Le chaim. Le chaim. <laughs> With the second sip, there is peppery, a peppery note in it, combined with a light sweetness, a honey sweetness. <laughs> now the honey is, well, I read honey so often. <laughs> the honey is really distinguishable, really there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, sweet, light, drinkable whiskey. In the aftertaste. Very light yeah. oaky notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a little bit of a oaky tone going on. Mm, my only critique would be 
it's a little young it feels a little bit young but the rest is a, a just a well balanced nice whiskey it's 46 percent abv and for that strength it's very well rounded and and smooth so the youngness is there but faint mm -hmm. Um, this is the thing, very well made for the first try. A little bit of a, a fresh note going on with my second sip here. A little bit of a, a pear note, a little bit of a citrus note going on, a little bit of a ginger touch. Ginger can be fresh in, in mild numbers. The aftertaste, ginger now, mm -hmm. stronger. Yeah. Yeah. The aftertaste is then more of the spicy ginger in the in the... In the squishing phase, <laughs> it was still a juicy, fresh ginger. Uh, Ricardo mm. Tavera, where does the barley come from? Well, from Scotland. <laughs> Scotland and <laughs> England. And England. Uh, mm -hmm. Time to visit the distillery, Ben. Yes, he had an appointment early last year, but then something came in between. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, when I will be allowed to visit the distillery? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, yeah, uh, the distillery was closely... The train um, is passing. Yeah, the train is passing. <laughs> the, the distillery, the founding of the distillery was closely associated with Dr. James Swan as he kind of, yeah, um, worked with the distillery to establish it. You did Yeah, know. sorry, he's dead. Yeah, but... He, he died in, in early 2017. But he, he is a, a well-known figure. I actually yeah, have to say I have not heard of him He yet. helped a lot of old distilleries come back into operation in Scotland. Mm, mm. Nice. So, but uh, Israel is a small country, uh, meaning it only has 9 million of um, inhabitants, of citizens. And that means a distillery which produces 1.1 million bottles per year i think when everything is uh, in maturation everything is in full force uh, it will just be too much for all of israel i don't think that whiskey is that uh, popular in israel yet so 85 percent of the product is uh, going into exports so yeah it's for the world to enjoy yeah, I don't have that much information because <laughs> nobody of us has visited Syria and there's not that much information available online. And uh, yeah. uh, well, uh, to say a little bit uh, about the distillery, it's a distillery in the city. In the city, It's an yes. urban distillery uh, and therefore you have a different climate, hotter than on the countryside. And so... Uh, very fast maturation. We have more, that's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the next one we're gonna try is the red wine casks. The first one was a classic, and now we come to the Elements series. The Elements um, red wine casks. And the red wine cask, remember, it comes with a blue label. This <laughs> is <laughs> the red wine with the blue label. <laughs> yeah. And it's the red wine is Typical because um, it comes from Israeli bodegas, from Israeli wine bodegas. And the Israeli wine is known for being uh, with a rough terrain and um, it is um, very spicy. And let, let me introduce that. Yeah, I have not tried it. <laughs> I, I bought lately a few cases because we were interested in and they came from the Golan Heights and they were really heavy, massive, uh, quite expensive here uh, in Central Europe, uh, red wines and we bought also uh, wines from the other side of the Golan Heights from uh, Syria and uh, they were as intense, as heavy as the wines from the uh, southern European countries at the Mediterranean Sea. It's, they are called the red wine countries in the <laughs> EC. <laughs> yeah. So these are heavy wines, and therefore you can use these brick casks for the maturation of whiskey. 
and brick maturation in wine cask is very popular today uh, so that more and more uh, wineries use those brick casks so there are plenty of them and they are not that expensive as the sherry are so the next whiskey the red wine whiskey we have uh, is a little bit more expensive is well below above 50 uh, up to 60 euros dollars pounds wherever you live and it's as well 46 percent unchill filtered uncolored and have a look at these wonderful dark colors uh, and that's for uh, showing that those casks are really active. Mm -hmm. Good, let's have a try. Some, uh, our Israeli watcher says uh, many whiskey drinkers here in Israel mainly blended. Yes, uh, yeah, you have them all over the world. All the blend whiskies, all the cheaps uh, are all here. They're all everywhere. <laughs> These people. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see how the, the wine influences influences the whiskey. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, the first one, uh, the classic, had a limitation of four thousand four thousand bottles, mm -hmm. and the red wine cast probably as well. Um, I don't know how many they really fill. So this is dark, massive. Grapey. Red fruits. Vanilla, caramel, fresh casks. Yeah, that's so awesome. I, I do also have a, a dark grapey tone. So it's, it's almost like yeah, velvet roses. Also a little. Oh, not yeah. This the the, what do you call the 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 acid from the from the leather the the gap, gap so oh, I don't know the English word. Mm, but uh, an acidic, a very aromatic, uh, dark acidic tone in there. That might be the uh, the acid from the grapes. Yeah, acid from the grapes, definitely. But in a in a very dark and muffy undertone. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Juicy, friendly, fruity, lightly sweet, and then the ginger appears again, probably peppery, so light spiciness, vanishing fast, giving a well-balanced aftertaste, dried fruits, sultanas. Mm -hmm. Officially it's sad, uh, coconut in it, but mm. no, I don't find that. Mm -hmm. mm. Full of volume. Full of volume and it's intense. Mm. A lot of wine, a little bit of dryness going on, a lot of grapes, a lot of mm, velvety touch to it, but also a lot of oak and a little bit of a not overwhelming, a leathery touch to it. Now it follows out in the aftertaste with a bit of a dryness going on. It's uh, an intense character. It's amazing. And now when you smell it, it's it's even more intense. So this is this is a really, really well-made, strong, intense whiskey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tannic acid. Tannic acid. Never heard the word. Tannins. The tannins. Tannin. Oh, tannins, <laughs> of course. The tannin. Tannin is in Gelbstoffe? Oh, stimmt. Okay. Uh, you have those. Uh, 
those acids from the leaves, yeah. the falling leaves in the autumn. Yeah, yeah. tannin, tannin. <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm. Okay, so that was the, the red wine cask and I have to say these are really really good red wine casks. So I I think there's a lot of wine drank all around the world and for that amount of wine drank all around the world there's not so many whiskey whiskies out there. Okay, I thought there was a car alarm going off. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but the thing is, not every wine has a um, oak cask maturation after it. Do you think there is an overflow of red wine casks after production, or hard to say? Hmm. Yeah, people like uh, the wine cask maturation a lot. So these brick uh, maturation in wine, so they people tend to to mature them longer for more than a year. Uh, former times they gave the cask away after just one year, had new ones to give a full impact on the wine. And today they say, well, we let the wine rest for another year, so you need twice the amount of casks. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Good. So let's get back to Israel. Yeah. Israel has um, on average 300 sun days per year. That is a lot. Compared to a hundred in England, <laughs> <laughs> is it a hundred? No, there's always rain. rain. Oh, it's Scotland. There's always rain in Scotland. It depends on which, which time of the day, not which day. So yeah. So they have a anyway. They have a lot of, um, a lot of sun, and they also in Tel Aviv. They are next to the sea, so they have a, a quite amount of humidity there, or uh, from fifty to ninety percent. So it's hot and humid and that makes the whiskey mature a lot faster at the distillery they say about twice or two and a half times as fast and but also what you have an, as a negative effect is and you have a lot more angels share in scotland you talk about one to two percent and here they say ten percent and that is similar to countries like India where you have 10% evaporation and that means you lose a lot of whiskey and it matures a lot faster so you have younger whiskies and as you can see they all don't carry an age statement you know they're at least three years old but they will not be much uh, much older than that because you already lost more than 30% mm -hmm. after three years that's mm -hmm. a lot yeah, let's look at the regions of Israel. Um, yeah, the regions of Israel, we have uh, Upper Galilee with mountains, uh, Jerusalem mountains. There are tons of mountains in Israel. And it also has a huge desert or huge deserts. Um, in the south, there will be an experiment about uh, Mars Station where mm. the ast astronauts will be training how to live like on Mars. Then we have the Dead Sea, which is very, very uh, interesting for maturation because it's uh, the Dead Sea is a very, 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 very salty. Is it considered a lake or a sea? I'm not quite sure, uh, but it's sea. very, very Dead salty, sea. and sea. the climate there is very, very, very special. And on the bottom right, uh, where we uh, are above the writing, that is Tel Aviv. So you have yeah, the towers there. It's an urban city and it's right next to the sea. So you have Mediterranean influence with high humidity. And they're on, on, the, the whiskey. on a northern latitude uh, like northern Africa. So this is really mm -hmm. hot. So, and they are uh, inside or in the east. Uh, of the Mediterranean Sea, not to compare with Africa uh, on the Atlantic Ocean shore. So there really it is hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the distillery actually does experiments with, um, with uh, casks matured in the mountains of the Golan Heights. And then there are casks in the desert and also casks near the Dead Sea. And I've heard that they are maturing them in bunkers. So 
very, very interesting. The next one we're gonna have is gonna be the Sherry. Yeah, the Sherry has the red box. And here I show it in detail. That's the wrong one. Yeah, yeah it's the black one. Yeah, <laughs> that was peated. That was peated. So here we are, right color. <laughs> Single malt whiskey sherry. Yeah, the sherry is. And on, on, sorry, and on the back, kosher. this five star with a K in it for kosher. So yeah, the the uh, sherry one is obviously matured in sherry casks, but also we start off with bourbon casks combined with Oloroso sherry casks and PX sherry casks. So it's not going to be just a fruity one, but also it's going to be a very, um, yeah. A sweeter one. A sweet one. How much PX is in there? We're going to find out. And if you look at the colors of those both whiskeys, then the sherry cast is a little bit darker and a little bit more reddish. And Where the, do you get this whiskey from Frankie Hawkins? From We're selling it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> We're selling it ourselves from, <laughs> from the distributor. So, yeah, yeah, so, we, so you said it already, I, uh, Ireland. Uh, Israel is exporting 85%. A lot of them to Germany where we live. <laughs> <laughs> It's very different to the last one. Mm -hmm. mm. Red fruits, soft oakiness, little caramel, and in the back, a light, fresh note. And I think the 46% is just right to drive all those aromas into my nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is uh, more sweeter and a little bit more fruity and just a little bit more fresh and, and on the up and up. I don't know. So it's just nice and pleasant on the nose with a, a nice sherry touch to it. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot deeper than the previous one. Mm -hmm. Red berries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. This time I had a lot more in my mouth than <laughs> every sip before. So this is filling out my mouth, covering everything, starting, mouth watering, juicy, mouth filling, massive, little bit, very little um, dark chocolate, but the sweetness everywhere. Longer, much longer aftertaste than the red wine. Yeah, poor. A lot. Mm hmm. Oh, nice. So it's a lot different to the other one, where the mm -hmm. other one was heavy on the fruity side. This one is light on the fruity side, pleasant, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. A little bit of bitterness going on with a little bit of a chocolate, dark chocolate touch to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm, the aftertaste, it becomes more oak. A little bit of a tobacco note there, so it, mm, it's a little bit of a roller coaster going on from sweet to strong. Interesting. Mm, I like it. Mm. Full volume. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. This is going to be hard to rate again. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is going to be hard to rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rewarding. Mm -hmm. Very good. So this bottle, as all of the elements series, are above 50 to 60 euros. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we already had a lot of questions going on with mixing of grain and grape. Doesn't make it kosher. And we'll come to that in the end of now this information section between the tastings. And uh, we start off with the production. Um, the grain or the malt comes from Scotland and England. And they mill it themselves. They um, put in their mash tun, which holds one ton. And That's quite a small one. Yeah, quite a small one. Uh, with 6,000 liters of water in two mashings. So two is kind of the one where you go a little bit faster. Um, usually the distilleries do, do three. And after that, they go into the wash bags for fermentation. They have six wash bags and they ferment for 60 to 72 hours. This is medium long to long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but for the fermentation, they probably do have a bit of have to have a chilling because if you have uh, oh, temperatures yeah. with over 30 degrees Celsius, uh, then you have to have uh, something to cool it down. Otherwise, the uh, yeast will kill themselves. Uh, I have a look, had a look at the weather forecast for Tel Aviv and it said 36 degrees Celsius. For all you Americans out there, it's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's really hot. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. The stilling works on two copper pot stills and a double distill, yep, like the normal Scottish uh, malt. Uh, yeah. And they come out with a new make at around 75% ABV and they fill about 1,100 uh, casks with a new make, but they will probably dilute it down a little Each bit. Each year, yeah. Here on the picture you can see the uh, wash still in the back and the spirit still in the front that's the smaller one and you can see that the pot still or the uh, the rising neck uh, rising neck is uh, has a, a distant distinct uh, uh, constriction. narrowing constriction so that the vapors of the alcoholic uh, vapors uh, are quite still and are separating very well but the still is not too high so that there is still some uh, some power in the uh, in the raw whiskey and it's not too smooth as you have with the very very high uh, stills. What is uh, showing here it's different to Scotland where you typically have a, uh, a floor a floor in between a roast floor uh, and here you have this leather <laughs> ladder uh, on the side so that you can reach the manhole uh, so that's different they are sitting right on the, the bottom floor of the still house. Mm -hmm. So after the distillation we go to maturation and they have um, ex-bourbon casks, they have virgin oak casks and have they have kosher ex-wine casks. Have you read what's written on the casks uh, on the right bottom? Mm -hmm. FBI 1990. <laughs> St. John something below. Uh -huh. oh. I don't know. And uh, the strange thing, what we found out is um, wine cars are not easily kosher. So um, they have to have a rabbi in Spain for the sherry cars. And he has to certify the sherry casks and put a wax seal on it and then send them off to Israel. And that then gives you a certified kosher production so you can write kosher onto your product. And these sherry casks probably have to have some quality standard or hygiene standard to be able to be wax sealed with kosher or something like that. But uh, it's still a mystery to me and I still have to visit the distillery. Good, on to the next whiskey. And the next whiskey is the last the one from the four elements peated. 
It's the grey one. Yeah, peated grey black for the. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it uh, the wrong one? Yeah, again. Oh, yeah. that was a very long class. <laughs> We have the wrong box? No, we had the right box. The right box, but the wrong bottle. Yeah. yeah. So the peated is now actually a peated expression of their whiskey. And for the peated, they have two weeks, twice a year, so four weeks for the full year, where they produce peated whiskey. And they produce it with 30 yeah, ppm. No, 40. 40 ppm. For, sorry, 40 ppm. And um, the majority of the whiskey here is matured in ex Isla single malt casks. Or oh, ex Isla, Isla whiskey casks. I'm not sure which whiskey. So, mm -hmm. so it, ha yeah. it has a combination of bourbon casks, rejuvenated refill casks, and fresh oak casks. And some STR casks as well. They use a lot of different casks for their whiskey. So now I'm sipping this one second time this evening and the smoke is not that strong as I mm -hmm. expected for 40 ppm. There might, there is definitely smoke in it. Uh, there might be a reason for it because the whiskey is maturing that fast in that hot environment uh, that you lose the ppms. Uh, that's typical for Older whiskies in Scotland, where you lose your uh, your smokiness as well and, and gain complexity, and uh, this is might be the same here that the 40 ppm in the uh, malt which they receive from Scotland and England uh, might uh, reduce to some 30 or 25 ppm, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. So what do you smell? Paid smell. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's not overwhelming. You already have something in the background. Fresh vanilla and a little citrus note. Typical for a fresh, younger whiskey. No alcoholic note at all. So the peat is over that. Yeah, yeah. So the peat smoke—it's—it's uh, it's hard to distinguish because it's not typical medicinal. It's not a ham smoke. It's not an ashy smoke. No. Mm -hmm. It's kind of I don't know a default smoke. <laughs> it's a—it's a, a very smoke. A sm <laughs> smoky smoke. A, a clean smoke. But for the the closest I would associate it is to. A dry, old, brushed-out chimney pizza oven. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it has a few uh, vanilla touches to it and a little bit of a side note of a fruity, wine touch. What they say here on, on the box, uh, the Atlantic meets the Mediterranean. Cast from Isla that's stoked in smoky aromas and salty flavors were chosen for the elements peated, a delicate, rather mellow and lightly peated whiskey. Mm -hmm. So wherever you got those 40 ppm from. Ah, they don't feel like 40 ppm, but it feels like, I don't know, a bit less. A bit less, 25. 25, 30. So, mm -hmm. cheers. Cheers. Oh, it'll Now the smoke covers your mouth, cladding, long, full rounded, smoky aftertaste. In the end, some citrus fruits, oakiness, little spiciness. Very balanced, intensely balanced. So the, the strength of the aromas is strong and it has the 46% as all the others have and it costs the same 
as the other elements cost. All of them cost in the 50s up to 60. So it's, there's more in this one. Mm. Mm. When you have it in your mouth, very, very faint smoke. Mm. Well, now that I've swallowed it, rises up. Yeah, it comes back to the 25, 30 ppm expectation I had in my nose. And mm, it's, it's nice. It's a yeah, chimney smoke, a mm. little dry, little sweetness. Mm. And a faint touch of a little bit of a wine cast in there. Mm. Well balanced whiskey with a a medium smoke, I would say. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like Not it. Too strong. Mm. Smoke from a haters? No, not that sharp and fiery. <laughs> what is haters? Greek mythology. Oh. Okay. Hades. Hades? No. Mm -hmm. mm, I like it. So it's a, it's it's amazing. I have to be. I'm a bit astonished of what they can produce over there and how they manage to do it. Okay, we're going for the the rating. This time is different. No, nope, for me it's the same. Last time I had four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. And this time, I did not find the peatiness so welcoming as it was the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a little haters in it. <laughs> and so I find the three, two, four, one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it's two, three, four, one. It's just the, the, the red wine from Israel that was just the, the specialty about what I've tried this evening. And the next one was the sherry, also very well made. The peatiness was nice, didn't make it up to the others, but it was a, it's a really nice peated, lightly medium peated whiskey. And the original, yeah, it was their first one. It's a, a light beginner's whiskey. It just didn't, didn't, yeah, I couldn't keep up with the others. Yeah, so, and yeah, someone says, you should try the Apex series by M&H. I think I've tried one, but I'm not quite sure. I, th I think I've tried one uh, when it didn't came up, come out <laughs> back then, 2019. Something I had like one that. on the channel here from M&H, uh, but I think I had the, the classic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we had a little bit of a discussion beforehand. A hot country. And we have both our arguments why uh, the maturation is a lot different to Scotland. That is for sure. There is no discussion about that. But how is it different? And uh, I said, or I say, it's because of the additive maturation. You have heat differences between uh, the day and the night, and that lets the uh, the wood expand and soak up the whiskey and then when it cools down it gives it back into the cask and then it has more contact with the um with the wood and therefore there's a more additive maturation and because of less time less subtractive maturation so i argued the other way around <laughs> so we have two maturations the additive maturation as ben said and the subtractive uh, maturation where you lose the unwanted aromas due to time and for that you need uh, reactions chemical reactions and if you increase temperature of 10 centigrades then uh, reactivity of substances typically double so having that hot environment will double and triple uh, the subtractive maturation that all those unwanted aromas will vanish faster so uh, both seem very reasonable <laughs> and probably both are going its way. Mm -hmm. And you said something about, uh, the distillery says, maturation goes two and a half times faster. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, well, 1.25 and 1.25 for each of those. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they uh, taste uh, mature. 
they are not those age kings, of course, uh, but they taste mature and they have a big, big cask influence, definitely. Mm -hmm. A big cask influence. So that is for you argument. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about what comes out with the distillery next. They have a lot of experiments going on and I think we've not seen the last of the experiments, mm -hmm. um, experiments up till now. And we will see more about the distillery in the future. And hopefully I will be able I will be able to get into Israel at some point because up till now I think um, we're not getting into there mm -hmm. and hopefully that will be better over the summer and I will find a way into the distillery and show you a nice distillery video about uh, what there. will be interesting they're producing now since 2015 mm -hmm. so they're over five years I think these will have three years in a day and they will have over five years whiskies already and they will mature them in those old bunkers old caves up in the mountains where it's cooler where they do not have this angel share uh, which is very interesting in a holy country so <laughs> that fits uh, <laughs> and uh, they will have a cooler environment there and the whiskey will not mature that fast so that they will have a, a 10 a 12 a 15 year old coming up um, which hasn't lost <laughs> three, three fourth of a cask <laughs> to the point of filling Mm -hmm. So they have to care about the volume of the whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was pretty much everything we know about the M&H distillery. Obviously, nice distillery on the plan. So it brings uh, Israel on the whiskey map. There are other distilleries within Israel, but um, yeah, we've not having had any of that yet. Um, in terms of next live tastings, we've not planned anything yet. Uh, we always do full runs through the uh, yeah, the dark half of the year, the winter, because everybody sits at home and yeah, likes to enjoy a whiskey and maybe have a little live tasting on the side. Uh, so there will no be announcement for a next live video, but I'm still already in planning to do a one or two things in the summer so maybe you should be keeping updated and uh, subscribe to the channel or go to whiskey.com slash live in the next couple of months maybe we'll find uh, a way to arrange another live tasting so do you have anything else no yeah, yeah. then thank you very much for watching and enjoy a nice uh, m and h whiskey and thanks for watching see you next time